Hi everyone and welcome back to TMG. If you are a returning subscriber, thanks for uh, coming back. It means that there's something here that you like. So please keep coming back. If you're a new uh, visitor, please do uh, to subscribe to this channel and always come back because we have a lot of good stuff here for you. So today I'll be talking about the Microtik Switch OS. The Microtik Switch OS is the operating system that powers the product lines. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some switches that are running on the router OS. There are also some switches that have both the router OS and the switch OS. Now, just as you have layer 3 switches with Cisco, you also have layer 3 switches and layer 2 switches with Microtik. So any Microtik switch that is exclusively powered by the switch OS is a layer 2 switch. The one that has both the switch OS and the router OS or is powered only by the router OS is a layer 3 switch. So in this video, we just want to talk about how to configure a Microtik switch OS device. The step-by-step -step guide on how to get it up and how to create VLANs on these types of switches. Now, the one I'm logged into is the Microtik CSS 326-24G-2X+. What this means is that the switch is the cloud smart switch. The model is the 326 series. It has 24 1G ports and two 10G ports. To understand how this device looks like, I hop on to the Microtik official documentation page on that this device so here it is you can see the name here and we can see how the device looks like here it is the cloud smart switch and uh, here are the features that it has powered by the switch os has 24 uh, gig ports and it has two uh, sfp plus ports it's one u rack mountable and the uh, if you scroll down a bit, you can see other things, including the price, the operating temperature, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can also see the max power consumption on the device. It's also tell, it also tells you here that the device can also be powered via PoE. Okay, now let's jump back to the device itself. Now, for you to configure this device, the first thing you might want to do is to set a system identity. So you come to system, you set an identity, and then you can change the password. Now, one thing I don't like about this device is that up till this moment, I haven't found a way to change the username on this device. I'm only seeing where to change your password. There is no way here to set a username. If you know of any way to get this done please drop the comment in the comment section and i'll be happy to learn from you so having set the system identity and change your password and also set the management ip here you will have options to do this either to be dscp assigned or via static you can get that done here okay now you might want to start from the link tab on the link tab here, it tells you the, the various ports that are available on this device. Okay, you can see that I have uh, from port one all the way to SFP2. Unfortunately, you can't see the SFP2 port uh, because I am not showing my full screen. Okay, and then the ports that are presently connected are the three ports, the first three ports and the SFP1 port. So you can see the speed that have been negotiated. It tells you the link status here. You can see the link status here. The port name, if you want to change the name of the port, you can change the name of the port here. Then the link status tells you that the link is on. The ones that are not connected shows you that there is no link. If you have auto negotiation as your preferred um, uh, negotiation mode you can leave it checked if you don't want auto negotiation you can just uncheck it 
you see that the SFP uh, port one, although it's a 10 gig port, it has negotiated one gig. And that's because the device that is plugged in at the other end is a one gig device. Now, one beautiful thing or interesting thing about this MicroTik device is that even though you have 10 gig ports, those ports are backward compatible or they are compatible with one gig SFPs. So if you plug in a one gig device at the other end, the switch port is going to negotiate one gig and it works perfectly. So like I said, you can change the names of your port here. You can name them differently here if you want. So this is the first thing, first place you want to come, go to link and name your port as you want to. Okay. The next tab here that I want to talk about is the SFP. This is where you can check things about the status of the uh, your connected optical modules. You can see your receive powers and everything right here and also see the operating temperature. You can see here that my transmit power, my TX power is minus 5.9 whatever dBm and I'm also receiving power here at minus 10 okay that's what it is then the next tab here that i want to talk about is the isolation tab at port one here can forward packets to other ports except its own port that's what you're seeing that all the other ports here are checked except for port one you can see that for port two it can forward packets or frames rather to port two port three and so on but not to port one to port three and so on and so forth, but not to port two. The same thing goes for port three. Port three can forward frames to port one, port two, port four, and, and so on and so forth, but not to port three. So all of them can forward frames to other ports except to themselves to create VLANs on the switch. The first thing you want to do is to come to VLAN. I have configured this device to put port one on VLAN 2281. So what you want to do is simply come here and type the VLAN ID that you want the port to be a member of. Okay, port two is placed on VLAN 2210, port three has been placed on VLAN 2215. The rest ports here that are on VLAN one are not active. Remember, when I check the link status here, you could see that only port one, port two, port three are all connected. Then you have SFP one that is also connected. The rest ports are not connected. So that's why when you come to VLAN, you will see that these first three ports are access ports. They belong to these VLANs that have been listed here. But the one gig port is my trunk port. It's what I'm using to carry the services. And as such, I did not place it on any VLAN, but you can see that the port type here tells you that only tagged frames are allowed on this port. So tag is for trunk, on tag is access. Now, if I go back up, I think I didn't share that with you here. I could change these guys to on tag here on tag here on tag so this tells you that these ports are all access ports and their respective vlans have been defined okay now remember to create vlans on the switch os come to vlan enter your vlan id and set your VLAN received here. For access port, it should be on tagged only, on tagged only. For your trunk port, do not set anything here. Just change this place to tagged. And when you are done with that, go to VLANs. And here on the VLANs tab, you simply come here, you enter your VLAN. Now you are going to use this uh, option here to append. For you to append, you just click on the append. It gives you an extra row here. On the row here, the first column, you are going to put your VLAN. Let's say VLAN 10, for instance. You put the name for that VLAN. Let's say TMG. 
Port isolation, yes. Learning, yes. But then you come here, you now define what should happen. What port is on that VLAN? Now, for the ones I have here, VLAN 2210 is on port 2. That's why port 2 is checked here. So what I'm saying is that this VLAN should be passed or frames for this VLAN should be passed on port 2. And then on the trunk port, which is the SFP1. Then you come back here for the second VLAN 2215. You just give it a name, the name for that VLAN or whatever name you choose to use for it. Then you come here and say that VLAN is on port 3. Now, permit me to go back again to explain. Now, this is 2215. If I go to VLANs here, you will see that 2215 is on port 3. Look at it. 2210 is on port 2. And 2281 is on port 1. I go back here again so that you can see. You can see here that 2281 is on port 1. But then it should also be forwarded on the trunk. Now here, 2215 is an is on access port 3. But it's also, you know, available to be forwarded on the trunk port. So what it means is that all the VLANs are going to be forwarded on the trunk port and also on their respective access ports. Now, for this one that I'm trying to use for this test, I've defined VLAN 10 here, and I've given it the name as TMG. Now, I will just come here and say, assuming I want to place it on port 4, I'm going to uncheck 1, 2, 3, and leave 4 checked, and I'll uncheck the rest except for the trunk port. So, I'll leave it on the trunk port. And then I'll apply and I'll OK it. Now, this is not going to have any effect because I don't have anything plugged on port 4. Now, if I had anything plugged on port 4, I would have come to VLANs here and on port 4 here. Okay, I will simply come here, define VLAN 10, and I will set the VLAN receive here to untagged. This is how you define your VLAN. So, after doing this, you have your devices connected and you are good to go. Now, to see what is going on on the uh, connected port, you come to host. The host tab here is like the show uh, MAC address table on Cisco. Okay, so when you click on that, you see that at the moment, the only active VLAN that is, you know, uh, working is the one on port 3. So on, on VLAN 2215, I'm learning MAC addresses on port 3. And I'm also learning the MAC on the trunk port. You can see this. So I'm learning MAC on both the trunk or, and also on the access port. Both the tagged and the untagged port. So that's how... Uh, easy it is for you to set up your uh, switches that are powered by the Microtik Switch OS. You go to VLAN, define your VLAN, go to VLANs, and then define which is access and which is trunk. It is as simple as that. You come to VLAN, you define your VLANs here, and assign ports to them. And then you go to VLANs and you specify where and where the VLANs should be allowed. So what you have here is more like VLAN pruning. You simply say where and where the VLANs are allowed. So the other part here, this is for uh, SNMP, for monitoring and all that. You have your uh, ACL if you want to apply some access list and all that. If you want to upgrade your device, you can simply come here, download and upgrade uh, your route, your switch OS image here. Then if you want to uh, backup and restore 
your device, you go to the system tab and scroll down here. Then you can save your backup and you can also restore it. So that's how quick and easy it is for you to manage your MicroTik switches that are powered by the MicroTik Switch OS. If you find this video um, interesting, if you found this video interesting, kindly subscribe to this channel, share, like, comment, and turn up your post notifications so you don't miss out on any of my tech videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for helping me grow this channel. And I hope you're going to come back. I hope you're going to stick around. So see you in my next video.